um, um, impeaching the first uh, deputy president of the republic. Big breaking news from the Senate there. Uh, eight days by the deputy president that, uh, that his political head has been on the chopping board. And of course that culminated in tonight. Of course a day that the DP or former DP chose or opted out of uh, cross-examination by the lawyers uh, of the National Assembly after being taken ill earlier in the evening. And of course the Senate a couple of, of minutes ago upholding that impeachment of the deputy president, moving him from office by way of impeachment, uh, firing the DP after 766 days in office. NTV senior reporter Duncan Haimba takes a look at Rigadi Gashagwa's rise and fall. Take a look. May I request that you place your left hand on the constitution. For Rigadi Gashagwa, a man whose political star sharply rose at supersonic speed, shooting from a one-term member of parliament straight into presidency, he was seen by many as a man in a rush. I, Rigadi Gashagwa. During the swearing-in ceremony, he was forced to retake his second oath of due execution of office of the deputy president after veering off the script. In the office of deputy president. In the office of the deputy president. Of the Republic of Kenya. Of uh, the Republic that I would diligently serve the people. Discharge my duties and perform my functions in the said office. May I request that we take it again, please? To the best of my judgment. I'm sorry, let's take it again. Let's take it again. In his 12-minute inaugural speech as freshly minted deputy, Hi. even before the new president could address the country, a fired-up Gashagwa was brutal as he pounded outgoing president Uhuru Kenyatta, whom he served for years as his personal assistant. That is the oath a move that caught many by surprise, including visiting heads of state and government. A matter that would come later to haunt him during his impeachment motion in the National Assembly. The Deputy President. Freedom is here with us. Freedom is here with us. I want to tell the people of Kenya that finally you are free. Kenya is now a democratic country. You don't have to look back when you do something. All Kenyans are free to associate whoever they want. It became a crime in this country to be afraid of William Ruto. It is only that it was not put in the pentacle. After he spoke and he sat down, I was seated close to Honorable Kiborek. I told Honorable Kiborek that this is not going to be a good person. From the analogy that formerly he was a PA to the former president. And the manner in which he spoke to me was in the contrary. I just say that when he was being sworn in, I didn't know him. The only thing I knew about him was he was a PA. Now, the chicken have, have, come, have come home to, to roast. You have told us, and we believe you, that you shall never in your, pres in your presidency use the criminal justice system to manage politics. You have told us that you'll manage politics the conventional way through persuasion and reaching out. And criticize he did without blinking, without fear, and without any iota of doubt. On 26th June 2024, he took President Ruto and the Director General of the National Intelligence Service, Nurdin Haji, head on. I am an elected Deputy President. I'm not appointed. I therefore have a responsibility to the people of Kenya. And that responsibility is informed by my belief that honesty and truth are critical components of leadership. 
I want to say that Nudin Hajj must take responsibility for the deaths that occurred. He must take responsibility for the mayhem. He must take responsibility for failing President William Ruto. He must take responsibility for failing the government of the Republic of Kenya. He must take responsibility for failing the Kenyan nation by not doing his job and advising correctly. And he must do the honorable thing, not just take responsibility, but resign from that office and allow the president to pick a competent director general. The man from Mathira, Nyeri County, who has fashioned himself as fearless and truthful, appears to have known that tough days lay ahead, the very day they officially began their political marriage between the man from the mountain and the man from the North Rift. And two years later, the Big Rift. I must tell these people the truth. Despite the fact that you are a hard worker, you have passion to serve, you are zealous, you are a go-getter. The journey ahead of you is not rosy. And true to his mantra of a truthful man, Gashagwa stuck to what he believed was his truth, that he went dispensing and popping like confetti whenever he came into contact with a microphone making his critics to accuse him of practicing politics of exclusion contrary to article 131 of the constitution which identifies presidency as a symbol of unity if it's a right for every kenyan to make a, a right. choice a right. and then tied to article 131 as the presidency the symbol of unity that is true in essence what that, that is true but choices have consequences that is true it's a political right to choose whoever you want, but choices have consequences. A year later, and the political choices he made and stuck to have yielded the consequences. After a spasonic rise in elective politics for seven years, Gashagwa has fallen from grace in presidency to the grass. He now stands impeached, making history the second deputy president impeached in his second year in office. I beg the people of Kenya not to measure me with the performance of William Ruto because you might get disappointed. I'll try. I may go up to 60 or 70 percent, but filling the shoes of this man is no small feat. The office of deputy President. For Gashagwa, the storm began gathering immediately he was sworn in after visiting heads of state, reportedly registered their disappointment in the manner in which he addressed former President Uhuru Kenyatta in full glare of the public, the media, and his family Authority. when he painted a picture of a vindictive leader. Then concerns followed on the country's cohesion and integration, whereby he brandished the shareholding card and unapologetically stated that Kenya Kwanzaa administration will give priority to those who invested in them first. Before lately seemingly turning his back against the country by declaring his only agenda is safeguarding interests of his Mount Kenya region which must get rewards for overwhelmingly voting into office the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. This is said to have provided a perfect opportunity to net him and politically crucify him for championing balkanization of the country, contrary to his oath of allegiance of the deputy president, as well as the oath of the due execution of the office of the deputy president. Hi. This, in addition to other charges, amounting to 11 in total, that Kibwezi West legislator Ekomas Mwengi Mutuse carefully rolled into a sling that he used to bring down the political giant, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa, who is now down and out. A man who had wielded immense power in the last two years has now been rendered powerless and will lose any retirement benefits that he stood to enjoy as a former deputy president since he has been impeached from office. Exiting unceremoniously and dramatically, 
just like how dramatically he took office on Tuesday, 13th September 2022. As they say, the higher they go, the heavier, or is it, the harder they fall. Did Geoffrey Rigathi Gashagwa script his own political obituary and has now fallen on his sword? Or is he a victim of political scheming? Duncan Haemba, NTV.